Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios, and today we're here to show you the new control surface script from Native Control for the Akai Fire. Now, nice little controller this, 16 by four grid controller, four touch sensitive encoders, a select knob, some other utility buttons, etc. The eagle eyed amongst you will notice the, the FL Studio or Fruity Loops logo, but don't get me wrong, this is a powerhouse of a MIDI controller when used with Ableton Live. In fact, it's got some features that even the Push 2 doesn't have. So let's get down to it. What we have here is we've got a set of mode buttons for the main grid. We've got a mode button for the encoders. We've got transport control as well. We've got four main uh, modes for the grid uh, that we see here. The first one is step, uh, which is a 16 by four note step sequencer. We've then got a keyboard with various scales and layouts, a more focused drum um, layout, and we've got performance or session view. Now this comes with an alt and a shift key, and those keys are used to great effect within this control surface script. Just on the actual installation, if you've installed any of uh, Native Control's products before, such as ClipX Pro, um, you'll know that it is an installer. You press one button, choose your application, your version of Live, and it does all the rest. The other part it now does for you is that Crossfire, the script for the fire, is automatically selected, as are the inputs and outputs and the MIDI settings for the track, if you open Live with your Akko Fire connected. So set up, turn on computer, open Live, Job done. Let's have a quick look at, at these uh, buttons first. Obviously we can move through the modes with them, but they also have shift functionality as well. And it's keen to note, and if we just, we'll just zoom in a little bit here. Lovely. Um, if I hold down shift and press the step, underneath it says accent. And what that will do, and there will be just a, a little notification there, is it will toggle full velocity mode on and off. For the note button, which has snap written underneath, a press of that will quantize the clip that's currently being controlled. Under drum, you've got tap. Tap tempo, fantastic. And on performance, Underneath is overview, which toggles on and off the detail view at the bottom of the screen. Now you also have control over the, the clip or device view with the pattern song button. And with shift you can turn on the metronome and off the metronome. My wife hates that noise. We've got the standard transport that you'd expect. So play and pause, play and pause. You can stop with the stop button and a second press of the stop button will take you back to 111. Of course you've got record and if you're playing with a clip and it's armed it's obviously going to go into overdub mode. Now if I move around, let's just move around here. So shift and play will launch just the clip that's being highlighted, observing the, the track and scene. But Alt and Play launches the highlighted scene. This is awesome though. Uh, let's move across. Uh, we'll go to soft chord. Uh, we'll go into note mode. Okay, now, effectively, most MIDI controllers follow what is active in your view in live. This one, if I press shift and the stop button, you'll see a control surface message in the bottom in yellow that says that this is now locked to that track. Sounds good. Let's move. So if you think, I may run this with a push. The push handling my drums or my sequencing or anything really. And then I have this linked and effectively locked to that track. Let me show you how that works specifically as well with the step sequencing. 
let's go into lock that. Now, the clip that we're actually looking at there doesn't have any notes in it. Let's put some in. Uh, let's do folds so we can see where they are. Uh, da, da, da. One thing that I do like about this controller, it's got a little indent in between each, uh, each set of four. I never can work out and count at the fly. So it's really easy to start step, step sequencing on this thing. So if I were to, now I'm locked, go across and we will go across to the soft chord again, you'll notice that my view here hasn't changed and I can continue to change the sequence in that clip. Moving up will actually bring the view to the highlighted clip in that scene. So now we're effectively, if we, I'll just cheat, we'll move back here. We're looking at that clip, even though we are viewing a completely different track. So it's really, really cool and makes this even more effective as a, a really small, tiny little MIDI controller. The final point of these, uh, these buttons here is the loop record, and I'm gonna press and hold that, and if you can see the screen there, yeah, just about, you've got fixed length of one bar, and we can change that to two bars. So effectively, when we are in a, uh, a clip launching situation, uh, let's go up to here, and we'll shift, We'll shift, unlock it and we'll go back to here. If I want to record exactly a two bar clip, just one press and it's done. Of course, I don't have to follow that and I, I could just do a one bar. So press and play and press and play again will get me whatever length of clip I want. I am in a drum kit rack though. so. In a drum kit, effectively, I can open the browser and with my screen here, I'm able to scroll through uh, all of the kits that are there. And if I hold down shift and scroll, it will go up alphabetically. So M, M, P, uh, Q. How many kits start with a Q? One. Okay, so it is what it is. Once I found the, the um, the kit that I want, 707 core kit, pressing select, loads it into that track. Excellent. As you'll notice there, uh, turning the dial will actually change the focus of that drum rack. And realistically, let's stick with the drum rack. Um, we're gonna have a quick look at the encoders. There's five modes on here. The first one is global and has all four lights lit. Then you have chain mode, represented by channel, which will look after the parameters within a drum rack cell, within a chain. You have mixer mode, which has got volume and pan and some other parts as well. And then you have the alternative of those two. So chain has user one, which is another four uh, mappable encoders and mixer has user two. Now, if you're in mixer or if you're in chain channel, holding down the alt key alternative and pressing mode will jump you straight to the alternative uh, setup for that particular mode. Holding down shift and pressing mode will always take you straight back to the global settings. Now, these are touch sensitive, so if I touch, you will see on the screen, in global mode, I've got tempo control, I've got global quantize for my clip launching, I've got record quantize, and I'll set that to a 16th, which even that is optimistic for my playing, and you've also got the swing amount, which you can obviously dial in to your heart's content. Moving to the chain mode, on the first we have chain volume. Uh, let's move across so we can see that on here. Uh, oh, I actually have to show a chain, that might make sense. Um, this will be based on, let's pick the kick there, and we actually have control over the volume, over the pan, and then it says I'm in charge of attack and decay. So that's on the actual simpler device itself, attack, and decay, and basically that will auto map onto those two parameters for whatever drum cell is in view. 
And I've actually created that myself, uh, as in mapped it myself, by going into mapping mode. That's Shift and Alt, Shift, Alt, and the Mode button. And you'll see now mapping mode is on. Let's go to sustain, and I'm gonna click on that parameter and move the third. And we'll go to release, and we'll move that. So out of mapping, Shift, Alt, Out. And now I've got sustain. And release. Now that's very specific to a drum cell and obviously using simpler. What if though, let's pick a let's pick a different drum. What if I did something along these lines and went in for an audio effect rack, uh, performance and DJ and DJ tools, whatever that is. Not sure what that is, but we'll soon see. Motion rate, that'll do. Uh, and what I want to do is go back into mapping and I'm gonna go motion rate, move, da da da. Oh, motion rate. So I could actually map this to any effect in that chain. And if you think about it, what I could do is create myself a master rack, call it, I don't know, uh, our drum rack tools and our macro one, our macro two. And they're just generic names. Now within that rack, I can basically put whatever effects I want for that particular drum cell and know that every single time I select it, I've got it mapped directly to there. The mixer mode. Well, mixer mode, let's drop that off the screen. Let's move across a bit. Mixer mode does your volume, it'll do your pan. These two are automatically configured to the low gain or the high gain of an EQ3 or an EQ8. In fact, if you have any form of rack and a macro named low EQ or high EQ, Basically, it's going to map to those. They can be remapped, of course, but they're set up as standard for you to really use this in a kind of a DJ fashion, I would su suggest. I've also got kind of a, well, kind of an idea that I'm working on that I'm probably gonna do some stuff with Macrobat for it as well. And you'll see in this isotonic rack that I've got four macros called These Are For Later. Now, if I go into the alternative view of the mixer control, that's user two, I've already pre-mapped these to these are for later. Now, very simply put, if I have another rack called isotonic rack, and it has those macro names in it, it will automatically map to them. So in this rack here, I've got these are later four. So in a different order, in a different place, and automatically mapped. Pretty cool, right? Thought you'd like that. Excellent. So I've got my step sequencer. I'm gonna lay down my kicks. Lovely. Now let's add the snares in. Oh, was that the snares? So, very simple. Along the side here, I've got my mutes, so I can turn on and off. I can also use for solo, and I can simply use it to select. So if I'm in the uh, view there, you can see I'm selecting between the different drum cells. Now, you'll notice at the top that I've got a grid control because I'm in a clip. Let's go back there. Pressing to the right, gives me effectively another bar there. Now, nothing's happened on the screen yet because there's no notes in it. So let's put a set of notes in. There we go. Lovely. Moving across to the note side of things, and let's stop that for a second. Uh, we'll go to the soft chord, because that's... 
you'll recognize the, the, the layout there, um, but we can change to a dual keyboard if you like the more traditional. We've got the white keys, black keys, no keys, and so lower to higher. Um, a standard major, minor, Dorian, Lydian, fr free, Phrygian, Phrygian, maybe. Using the grid will actually move you up and down in your octaves, pretty cool. Drum mode, you've got two views of this. Uh, the first one's 64 pad layout and this, when you're working with a <laughs> synth is gonna have them all lit. So let's go back to our 707 kit. Lovely, F quickly change the view and you can see now in the drum cell chooser, you've got all of that. What I personally like is the 16 levels. So you've got the standard what's in view and as usual, you can move up and down. And you'll see that on the screen as well. So I'm gonna pick that and here to the right, 16 levels of velocity. Beautiful. I've also got four in the corners here. Now I've already recorded one into here and this is called a cycle. So I think it was shift, lovely. So now it's in record mode and what I'm gonna do is record a little sequence, stop, and now I can play it back. Nice little feature there on the drum. In the performance mode, effectively this is as you would expect it to be, uh, a view of session. So let's go up and down and you can see it jumps in four at a time. Unless I hold down shift and then just one at a time effectively. I launch my clips, but I've also got the alternative view. And if I hold that down, what you see here is clips that are playing. So I can stop them. I've also got the track mute control, solo or cue, depending on what you've got connected for your sound card. And finally, another way to select between the tracks. You'll also notice I've got over here, the ability to jump into my return tracks as long as they're in view. So all in all, fantastic little controller. It's the Akai Fire. It's not just for Fruity Loops, Native Control Crossfire. It's available now at Isotonic Studios. If you've bought one of these for Fruity Loops and you're thinking about getting into Ableton Live, well, here's a nice way of reusing some of the hardware that you've loved in the past. I love this little thing, it's great. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Cheers.